So let's start with the first habit. A systems thinker considers how mental models affect current reality in the future. So let me put this again. We, the mind captures, uh, we capture uh, a lot of information through our five senses and it is fed into the mind which con constructs these mental models. The brain translates them and converts them into neural networks and plays them back uh, when it is triggered. As I said, like it's a, it's a either an unconscious trigger that when we hear a word or an image or an emotion or we look at a person or it's you know an event, a recurring event or a similar situation. And depending on how that mental model was constructed in the first place or has been upgraded over time, uh, directly translates into uh, you know the kind of effort that we're putting in. And therefore, the outcomes or the results that um, that uh, reflect those efforts. So thus, mental models uh, determine how we react or respond to stimuli, how the way we think or you know our thinking and emotional patterns, uh, which is how we process our emotions that we feel and experience. Uh, problem solving also, like how do we? I mean, what is our way of approach when we face a problem? How do we? How do we look at the problem? How do we solve the problem? And uh, how do we go about this whole process? Uh, and how do we, uh, what do we do when we um, encounter obstacles or adversity or how, how do we respond to those things? How do we deal with such things? And how do we uh, overcome those things? So how we manage conflict, how we make our decisions and choices. Like I said before, mental models that we build uh, ourselves and affect and influence the mental models of other people and vice versa, you know. As a life coach, uh, I'm actively involved in working with, you know, uh, people and understanding the mental models. So let me share an example. I was working with a single parent um, who could not uh, travel because she had a child and uh, elderly parents to take care of at home. Therefore, in her organization, she told that she wouldn't be able to travel on work because that was one of her constraints. And she felt over time that, uh, and she believed, and she started believing it strongly that uh, because of this very constraint, the management was probably not taking her seriously when it came to promotions or consulting her for important decisions or for, you know, and then uh, different experiences that she had built on this mental model that she created in her mind. Uh, so as we worked together, we dug deep into these mental models, um, finding out what assumptions and what interpretations or, you know, uh, were made and on what basis, uh, what conclusions did she jump into without uh, complete and total evidence, you know, through questioning, uh, through deep and provoking questions, we figured out that this was a mental model that was just created by her own perception. Uh, and maybe the organization or the management was also looking at her that way, which we really do not know. How we worked on this was we changed her mental model. So we removed all the assumptions and interpretations and conclusions, all those data points she built her mental model upon, which was not working for her. So we deleted all that stuff and then we created a new mental model, uh, which was more aligned with, you know, the kind of future that she wanted to create, the, the kind of role that she wanted to play, uh, uh, the value she wanted to provide, create for the organization and uh, how she wanted to you know her her group or her mini organization to run so as we worked together on this uh, it not only just freed up a whole lot of mental space it also uh, freed up a whole lot of energy because you know she was not going through those mental models in a loop or trying to defend herself or find excuses or to uh, make the choices that she was making based on those mental models and of course it uh, freed up a whole lot of time because now uh, all that energy time and mind space was uh, cleared and freed up she was now able to put her uh, mind and energies and uh, time into what she wanted to create uh, how she wanted to do it and all that now so the difference was this that before when she went and met her uh, managers for any you know discussions it would be 
what is a role that you can offer me or what is it that you can do for me uh, now there's the uh, the whole um, dynamics of the conversation changed where she would go and say hey this is what we are doing in the uh, group and this is the results we are achieving and this is how i look uh, this is a roadmap i wish to create and this is a value we want to provide and create for the organization and for our customers so the whole dynamics changed so completely that uh, the managers were listening to her and giving her the support that she was looking for and some of these act as a barrier to what i'm uh, we are trying to achieve and as i spoke in the uh, as i speak in the growth mindset module um, i always had this belief uh, the mental model in my uh, head uh, since i was a child that i'm not creative and uh, somewhere that kind of you know built up over time and uh, it turned into something uh, when i was in college it was more like okay i am not creative so i can't do anything i don't know i don't even want to try anything uh, because i'm not good at it so this kind of actually uh, in my four years at college this really blocked my uh, creative self expression and uh, uh, even though I, uh, inherently i wanted to go and express myself but this this mental model that i had created acted as such a barrier that i could never muster the courage nor the enthusiasm to step outside of that comfort zone and go and try something new it uh, affects the self confidence and how you perceive yourself your self esteem and uh, my self worth and everything and it wasn't until after i started changing my mindset and started working on these mental models that i had and you know chipping them away and re- chipping away the ones that really didn't work and uh, reconstructing them or upgrading them into new mental models that i was able to actually step out of that comfort zone and that's when i was making progress and achieving the results that i was um, wanting to achieve the second habit of a systems thinker that i'm going to talk about is um, a systems thinker recognizes that a system structure generates its behaviors and uh, in a way we have spoken about this uh, in to the mental models uh, example on how the mental models that we create uh, influence and generate the behaviors of uh, of each one of us individually and collectively different parts of an, a system do affect one another there are common uh, we share common mental models as a family as friends as uh, probably our relatives as uh, a culture or because we share a language or uh, we belong to a certain region or we belong to a certain nation or uh, globally we do share mental models But therefore in a way we can say that uh, the parts of a system do affect the other parts of the system and the system as a whole now i could give a few examples uh, like i was uh, reading this article recently on how uh, you know if uh, neptune were to something were to happen to neptune or it it got displaced from its position uh, in whatever ways because you know a uh, a uh, uh, a bigger star was going to attract it out of the solar system and what impact would it have on the solar system so it just goes about to show that how uh, the balance and order in the universe that we observe is so much about the the you know the right thing being at the right place at the right time in the right way and and you know uh, and executing whatever they are executing in the right way so that is what keeps it all stable so even if one of these were you know what to something were to happen then yes uh, you know the sun may not be where it is the moon may not be where it is or uh, the earth may not be where it is and it probably would all be hurtling in space and not even exist anymore so uh, just to see this big picture that our very existence is uh, so dependent on all the interconnection and interdependence of these different parts that make up the whole and it also depends on how what is the system that you're talking about you're talking looking at the universe as a system you're looking at the solar system as a system you're looking at this earth as a system you're looking at you know a family as a system an organization as a system or uh, as an individual you know we are made up of trillions of cells and trillions of atoms and each cell is made up of trillions of atoms and we have so many organs and organ systems in the body so this body itself is a huge system 
like we are talking about you know the mental models we place in the minds affect our behaviors and our actions the what we speak and you know how we, how we speak and what we do and how we do them so it just clearly shows how all the different parts of any system affect one another and again how w- what we do and what we speak again affect and go back and you know feed, feed back into those uh, mental models so it's all so intricately connected uh, it's very fascinating uh, a very scary at times too how we all uh, can be influencing one another because of you know the the interconnection and interdependence that exists so for example it could be a family like you know how i interact with my husband um, the way we probably interact with one another can influence the behaviors the mental models of my children and their behaviors and how they in turn interact with us which in turn will influence the mental models that we have in our mind and our behaviors towards them or towards the others or you know it it, it and this whole family dynamics can influence the way the children can go and um, behave outside in the external world and similarly uh, you know we are just one person whether it is workplace or the home so these uh, this what, what uh, you know what, what happens at home influences what happens at the workplace and what happens at the workplace influences who we are or what we are at home so this is all so intricately intricately connected and uh, similarly in an organization at a professional workplace uh, you know uh, the different systems uh, be they uh, technology systems or uh, be they uh, people individuals in the organization uh, there is always a dynamics that is going on so even if we are in different groups the dif- uh, the groups do influence one another directly or indirectly individuals within the group do influence one another directly or indirectly and as a whole organization different organizations could be you know influencing one another again so for example what happens at the customer you know to the customer organization can have an impact on the organizations which are dealing with them which in turn has impact on the different parts in the organization different groups and different individuals who comprise the system so as i said it all depends on what you're looking at as a system what are the parts of that system and how they are influencing one another this actually gives me a valuable tool uh, to work on when things go wrong uh, how can i focus on internal causes rather than you know blame somebody outside the organization when my client when my client went and you know we did all the uh, uh, rework uh, on the mental models Uh, it really helped her transform her the way she her perception her view and uh, you know her energy and everything was so transformed that uh, the way she approached the whole uh, situation in life was like totally different like you know it's a, such a so i would say ask questions try to clarify get clarifications if required speak to someone uh, so that you know the the thinking uh, and thought patterns and emotional patterns can be uh, un- entangled because sometimes they're so entangled that we can't figure out you know what is starting and what is triggering and what is the consequence or what is the cause also look at resources available maybe we do have the resources and we're not lo- really looking at how to make use of those resources spend some time clearing these mental models we spoke about the mental models need constant weeding so that we not Uh, building and constructing models that are not going to work for us and it gives us the you know the mental space the mind space uh, to really create new models and that is where you know the flow of creativity uh, the new opportunities show up like that in front of us and we get to do so much more um, in in what is in right in front of us like you know it's finding diamonds in your backyard this is where you get started and you can start doing great things because you know you're constantly uh, looking at uh, internal causes and reworking them remodeling them reconstructing them and uh, putting in your 100% and clearing your own path